Hi, I'm here with uh, Stan Miller from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how how Stan leverages the online world in his job uh, at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. So, Stan, can you tell can you tell me a little bit about um, what your work encompasses? You know, your official title, that kind of thing. Absolutely. I am a personal technology writer and an assistant features editor at the Journal Sentinel, and that also includes some general assignment writing uh, responsibilities. Uh, I write about technology from a very strongly, tightly focused consumer and entertainment uh, perspective. So what you're doing in your home, what you're doing out and about, uh, the relevant technologies, the practical technologies uh, that people, everyday people use, and uh, that, that's my primary area of coverage. But as newsrooms shrink and as uh, you know, staffs have gotten tighter, we can find ourselves writing about, and I find myself writing about a diversity of things. So, uh, you know, that-, that what, are you, what are you covering these days? Uh, What's on a, your desk? A lot of events. Yeah. There's, you know, a lot of events, especially now during the summer when the festival season ramps up. Everyone in the features department is gonna be helping cover Summerfest. Everyone helps cover the, the state fair, uh, you know, the various cultural festivals in town, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the different fairs and events. The, the stuff that, you know, that's happening in the community that we can cover really well. And uh, Do you have a specific uh, angle? Tip, you know, it, it depends on the event. It really does. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll, you'll go to an event, you just have to find the story. You just have to walk around and talk to people and, uh, and see you know, what stands out. Sometimes mm -hmm. the news happens right in front of you and sometimes it presents itself as you're having a conversation with someone. Well, we, um, before the camera was turned on, we were just talking a little bit about um, how do you find the news? And you, you were just talking about going to an event, walking around, seeing what's happening, what's out there. Um, you mentioned using Twitter in an interesting way to kind of find the news. Can you talk a little bit about how you, how you kind of tap into trends? Absolutely. Uh, for us, uh, for journalists, online social media is really just a remarkable way for it, it, to, to have that voyeuristic way of peeking into the conversations that are going on. So one of my favorite things to do is just bring up a window with a hashtag on a topic that I'm interested in or a topic that's been in the news recently and see what people are saying. Uh, you know, it's a great window into, 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 into hearing what people's opinions are, what the initial buzz is, and then also a way of engaging those people directly and starting a conversation with can you give me a, like a for example, what's a, ha a hashtag you might have, a keyword that you might have plugged in? Abs uh, very recently, in fact, just this morning, uh, Verizon launched the Droid X uh, new Android smartphone. Mm -hmm. So what, of course, what do I do? I bring up the window with the hashtag Droid X, and all of a sudden you can see all the people uh, you know, who are tweeting about it, and some people say some really interesting things, and you want to connect with them right away and say, you know, you know, whether they're in town or out of town, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna get some context and some perspective and maybe think of something or see a concern that they had that I might not have had. So it's really just a, a, an immediate way, jumping off point into connecting with people on specific topics. So um, so Twitter's one technology uh, that we have you know, available to us. You know, what, what in particular interests you in the social media environment? What, describe, Describe some other tools that you may use in the social media environment. Well, big fan of Facebook, and the Facebook is a it's a favorite in the newsroom in general because it allows us to build kind of a base of people who we can tap for ideas, uh, and also push out what we're working on and get them to distribute that to their friends. So, so in so an effort to get it to spread virally. So, so you would actually um, are, are these people that you're connecting with? Um, are they? Business people? Or are they just regular consumers, or are they influencers? You know, and how do you find those people? This approach, and everyone's strategy in the newsroom might be a little bit different. I tend to connect to anyone who is going to be in our readership, who has an interest in connecting to me. I mean, do I have friends and family and colleagues and influencers as part of my network? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I use social media as pretty much an open book. I don't use it for really personal, personal communication. Mm -hmm. I use it because I want all that information coming at me from as many angles as possible. So I want a lot of stuff in my news feed. I want to see what stories people are posting, what games they're playing on Facebook, what photos they're sharing, because you never know where the story might be. I'm going to call you. You're a great resource. I mean, when we start talking about things we need to do for our customers, I think that's actually, a, you're a good resource for that. Um, you know, what, what are people actually doing? Um, so. 
you know, how, so we've talked about walking around at events, we've talked about sourcing things through Twitter or Facebook. What are some other ways that you gather the news? How do you seek it out? Do you, do you visit, uh, you know, blog, uh, you know, blogs regularly? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you always have to check out what the competition is doing and what the enthusiast or trade press is talking about. Because right now, especially in the realm of consumer electronics, uh, the, the circle of information sharing when it comes from the companies, because companies are private entities, they can decide who they want to share their stories with first. Mm -hmm. Very often that is with um, you know, journalists who are working at very, very large publications, or okay. uh, you know they grant exclusive access to certain blogs. In my realm, in the technology realm, those blogs are blogs like Engadget or Gizmodo or you know blogs like that. So it's incumbent upon me to check out what they're writing about every day, uh, and I pull all, all of that in. Whether it's you know whether it's an enthusiast blog, whether it's a, a large commercial blog, mm -hmm. whether it's a, you know, whether it's a news site or technology site, I pull all of that in through RSS because it's a really quick way for me to kind of digest it all. And do you, do you, would you use like Google Reader for I that? Do. Okay, I, I think the big question that I have is how do you filter all that? How do you how do what how do you know what stands out or what should be a standout you know item? Is it because you see common threads appearing, or you know what helps something stand out for you? For me, my job is it, it, for me it, the filtering mechanism breaks down to what's going to be relevant to our readership and specifically to my content, re, uh, the content that I produce for our readers. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it's a technology that's really you know if it, it's a cell phone that's going to cost two thousand dollars and is only, and doesn't ha isn't available on a carrier in Wisconsin. It's easy for me to glance at the basic details of that and move on to the next item. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a technology that's being rolled out by a major service provider here in our area, if it's a device that I think resonates with our readers, uh, it's something that's, you know, that gets a special star and then that's worth clicking on and that's worth digging down. Okay, but now you're starting to tap into something that I think is really interesting, which is understanding the audience that you're, that, you know, you're writing for. Um, and one of the things that I know is, is really challenging to a lot of PR folks is how do I, how do I approach the press release? So as, as we kind of explore that a little bit, question number one is, do you still get press releases and what forms do they take? Do you still get a, you know, a couple of you know, typed pieces or you know, word process pieces of paper or does it all come to you via email? How does, how does that happen? You know, it depends on the nature of the relationship that, you, that, that I have with that public relations outlet that's sending me that press release. I mean, you're, being, you're, you're in the business long enough, you establish relationships with people. Uh, they kind of, you know, they, they, can, they tailor their, the way they are sending information to you because they know you. So, and for me, uh, especially if I know and trust the source of that public relations um, you know, reaching out to me, you know, send it to me, send me all the information in, in addition to, you know, whatever, photos, if it's a new device, for example. Right. Don't send me the press release and say, can I send you photos? Spend, spend the extra couple of megabytes and attach the photo to the press release and let's save a step, that okay. kind of thing. Okay. Um, you know, do you, is it do you, appropriate to follow up with a phone call? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. The people who I work with regularly know how I operate. Uh, typically, you know, maybe not. Maybe you don't need that follow-up phone call because I'm going to be calling you ten minutes from now, mm -hmm. or you know, half hour from now, that kind of thing. Um, but yes, absolutely. Email, you know, press releases come in by email, and the best ones have everything that you need for you know a quick hit turnaround, you know, blog okay. post, and then you might follow, you might follow up, um, you know, with a phone call for a bigger story, depending on what the news is. Do you use things like PR Newswire or Pitch Engine or? Market wire, any of those like, online services, are, are those valuable to you? Uh, to varying degrees. Um, some of, some of those examples more than others. I found that you know I I prefer that kind of point to point connection with whatever PR person is working with that company in order to to get me what I need. Um, so a direct personal connection. Yeah, I typically find that a bit more useful. Okay. And okay. I've experienced personally. Some delay with you know I'll, with news coming out over the you know from one of those larger services. Yeah. Um, you know I'll get a call from someone who works with the company. We'll have that conversation. They'll give me that press release and.